Let's briefly talk about improvements in camera technology and why at some point it might actually be useful or worthwhile to you to upgrade your DSLR body. Now this video is not at all to say that I want you to stop and go buy a DSLR right now. Do not do that, okay? What I'm saying is that at some point you might run into limitations. I want to explain that now and at that point, maybe then consider buying a new DSLR. Now if you've ever wondered why DSLRs are so expensive to begin with, a big portion of their cost is actually in the camera's sensor. This is where the image is actually being recorded. In general, the nicer the sensor, the broader the dynamic range that the camera can pick up. So for example, an entry level DSLR might once again have a dynamic range of 10 stops with the camera sensor that it comes with, while a more professional level DSLR might be able to get you 12 stops, while a super high end DSLR might be able to get you 14 stops. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, well, Pi, if we're going to use auto exposure bracketing, then why does it matter how broad the range of the sensor can capture when we can just change the bracketing sequence? Well, here's why it matters. Let's say, for example, we have this entry level DSLR at 10 stops versus, let's say, a super high end camera that can shoot at 15 stops. Now, I don't think there is one right now. I think the 14 stops is about the limit right now, or 13.7. But let's say, for example, this camera did exist. Well, on the one side, if we shoot, let's say, a two-stop bracketed sequence, so if we're shooting a three-frame, two-stop bracketed sequence on this camera that has a 10-stop range to begin with, well, then basically here's what we get. We get 10 stops in the median, we get minus two here on the dark side, plus two over here. When we combine all three of these, we have 14 stops of dynamic range. Now, on the super crazy high-end camera that doesn't exist yet side, we have 15 stops within that one single exposure, which is actually more than that other camera did in that bracketed sequence, which means that as a single shot HDR, we could actually pick up more dynamic range within one single photo on that camera than we could within all three photos on this one. And that opens up a whole world of possibilities. Now let's talk about if we were to actually bracket. Now if we were to bracket on this super high-end, insanely crazy camera, then we'd have 15 stops in the middle. We go two stops darker over here, two stops brighter over here, and now we have a full range of 19 stops within our bracketed sequence on this camera, which is basically one stop less than what our eyes are seeing. Okay, so when that camera comes out, that's gonna be awesome, just letting you know. <laughs> so this opens up a lot of possibilities that you wouldn't have available to you on the lower end side. Now again, what I'd always recommend is master the techniques that we teach you in this DVD. Go out and shoot, shoot your brains out. Shoot until you, no wait, do not shoot your brains out. That would be a bad idea. But go out and shoot until you basically have mastered every single technique here. When you feel like you have basically gotten limited or where you have hit kind of that roadblock where the camera itself is preventing you from taking the kind of photographs that you want, at that point, go out and pick up or buy a DSLR that will enable you to shoot the kind of photographs you want. The great thing about current cameras, like for example, the D800, is that it brings in so much more possibilities into shooting a single shot HDR. Because on my 5D Mark III, let's say I capture 12 stops of dynamic range, on my D800 I can get 14 stops. Well, as a single shot HDR, I get two more stops over here, which means that in a lot of scenes, I can basically capture everything. Or if there's a 14 stop scene that my 12 stops on my Canon wouldn't be quite enough for, the D800 is enough to capture all of that. So that's basically the advantages, but again, master these techniques first when you hit these roadblocks when you run into a point where you can't progress at that point consider buying a new dslr so again don't do anything right now go through this entire dvd master all these techniques regardless of whatever camera that you're using doesn't matter if it's a rebel or a d800 or a d4 anything or even a hasselblad all right you're going to master these techniques and you're going to be creating professional hdr photographs regardless of the camera that you're using if you decide to pursue this further and you run into limitations at that point, then consider upgrading your DSLR camera to kind of open up additional possibilities and boost the overall quality and possibilities in your HDR photographs. Let's go on to the next video.